Rob from the Brush and Bulkham. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint an Easterling from the Far Harad Army for Middle Earth Strat. Hi, it's Rob from the Brush and Bulkham. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint an Easterling from the Far Harad Army for Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game. Now they're great looking miniatures, they have loads of gold and a sort of deep maroony red kind of colour for the rest of the clothing, so you can get some really nice little techniques on there to really set them off on the tabletop. If you'd like to support me, my coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Now on to the video. So this is the miniature, finished. It's got some cracking details on it. I love the armour plate on this, but I like the colours too, the gold and that sort of kind of maroon red. Really, really nice colours and very, very simple to do as well. Now we're going to use some Citadel Bugman's Glow to do the face. There's only a little T-shaped section of face visible on these miniatures, so you're just going to sort of squeeze that in there. I thought I'd do this before we do the gold. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Reichland Flesh Shade just to shade that so that you get the details showing through on that part of the miniature. Next up is some Citadel Dryad Bark that's going to be used just to do his shoes and also you have that square on the front of the shield too which seems to be painted as though it's wood on the front of the golden shield so we'll be doing that with Dryad Bark as well. Now we're going to use Citadel Retributor Armour as the base coat for all of the golden sections on the miniature. So give these a nice smooth layer of the Retributor Armour. Now we can start working on the shades. You can see that square on the front there. I still haven't painted that with the Dryad Bark but I add that over the next layers. But once you've got all that gold on we can move on to the next colour. The little square of dryad bark added as well. We're now going to move on to Citadel Iron Hand Steel. But something like Lead Belcher would work as well. Any kind of that dark silvery metallic colour. I'm going to work this onto the sword, the hilt and the pommel too. So get that all looking silver. One of the good things to think about the Lord of the Ring miniatures are that they are very easy to paint. And get looking really decent because they have some great details on them but they aren't massively intense on different colors so they are fairly quick to paint so now i'm going to use some vallejo black to do little sections between the armor there's little parts on the trousers and the sleeves and also the tie that he's got around his waist too Now we're going to use some Citadel Corn Red as the final colour for his clothing, or her clothing. Can't really tell under all that armour. But for the final parts of the clothing we are going to be using Citadel Corn Red. The base colours in place, we're now going to use some Citadel Agrax Airshade. Now going to paint this onto all of the gold. A sign of excellent skill, I failed to record the section where I used Citadel Caroberg Crimson Shade on the corn red. So if you have Caroberg Crimson Shade, or if not, Citadel Druchy Violet will do a decent job too. Paint those over the corn red, so you get that nice shaded sections on those lovely crimson bits. Next up, a little bit of Citadel Nuln Oil, 
haven't bothered speeding this up because it's literally just this sword that is getting the null oil on it but this will dull it down quite nicely and also get you the shade in the recesses to bring out all those details around the hilt and the grip Returning to the base colours now, we're going to start with Citadel Retributor Armour. We're going to start reapplying this to the gold sections. So when you're applying these colours, think about where the light will be catching them. So I always think of the light coming down from directly above. And from there, you want to think about how that is going to catch those metallic sections. So where it's maybe folded under the body or not going to be getting too much light. You don't want to have too much of the base colour back there. And then it'll be getting lighter towards the top edges. The gold, it doesn't matter too much on this miniature, there isn't really any undersides to much of the gold. But if there is any, just leave them shaded, and we can highlight the top edges. So the next color we're going to use is Citadel Liberator Gold. I'm going to use this to highlight the first layers of this gold here. So you can see I'm painting this sort of like on the top right of the shield, where it be catching more light, and just a few little bits on the other sections to bring those details out and highlight them a little bit more. And the same with the helm as well, you want to highlight those surfaces that are catching more light with more liberated gold to lighten that up and get that so it looks like it is reflecting the light. The final one we're going to use is Vallejo Model Air Chrome and we're going to mix a little bit of that with the liberated gold. And we're going to use this mainly to do edge highlights. Now this has a really high amount of pigment in it so you can really lighten up all these edges and the areas where it's going to be catching the most light to give it a really good shine. By adding that to the Liberator Gold, you get that really light golden colour with that shine. So you can see where I've painted this on, how much it catches the light. So you want to go around and do this to all of the edges that would be catching the light to make those stand out. And also any other larger surfaces where you might have a bit of shine from the amount of light hitting that area. It's going to work on the... Crimson now, we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Corn Red and reapply the colour to all the crests and the ridges and the flatter areas that be catching a lot of light. As this will be where we'll be highlighting it as we go along. So you don't want to paint the undersides of any of these red areas because that will be in the shade, so the shade will be darkening them quite nicely. Next is Citadel Wasdaka Red. You can use this to highlight the corn red that we've just reapplied. So you want to use this Wasdaka Red. Cover about 50% of the area that you've covered with the corn red. Making sure that you're doing it on the areas where it'd be catching more light. So sort of on the top of those crests and the areas that are sticking out more that would catch more light. That's the areas you want to be putting this Wasdaka Red. Now we're going to use some Citadel Pink Horror as the final highlight for the crimson areas. I'm going to use a really fine brush here and just do little edge highlights and the very tops of some of those crests just to lighten those up, get those standing out a little bit more. You can see with those details painted on there, just on that front bit, how much of a difference just this final little edge highlight makes. So using some Vallejo black now, we are going to go over the areas that we've painted black just to make sure that there's no of the other colours or shades on there to discolour them. Just pick out those sections again so that we can get that black colour nice and flat and then start highlighting with a few different shades. So the first shade that we're going to use is Vallejo German Grey. It's a really, really dark grey and it's ideal for highlighting black. So we're going to paint this on all of the ridges, much like you did on the cloth. Paint it on all of the ridges and the crest of those ridges. Just to show where the light will be catching those a bit more. This will really bring out the details in those black sections that you can't really see too much on.
the German grey done, we're going to use some Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey just to do some edge highlights. So we're using this like we did with the Pink Horror, and you're just picking out details and ridges. And this just makes those details stand out. Now ordinarily you wouldn't do too many highlights on the underside of the leg there, but because there's not too many details on the black surfaces on the front of the model, I thought I'd pick some of them out just to give them a little bit more detail when you're looking at the miniature from the front. So you can pick out the ridges and crests and do some edge highlighting on the straps and on that material tied around the waist there and on the sleeves. So now returning to Dryad Bark from Citadel. We're just going to touch up that square on the shield and also any bits of the shoes which may have been covered over by any other colours. Mainly working on the crests and stuff of the shoes obviously to keep that null oil shade on them in the recesses. Now I'm going to use just a bit of Bane Blade Brown, mix that with the Dryad Bark a little bit so you get a slightly lighter shade. All we're going to do is pick out the details on the shoes like we have done with the cloth and the trousers and those crimson areas. And we're also going to do some stripes which are going to be going horizontal if you're looking at the shield in a vertical way. So we're just going to do some horizontal stripes using a thin brush and dragging the brush away from the tip to get those nice straight lines on that brown bit of shield. Now we're going to try doing the eyes. We're going to use a little bit of Vallejo White. A bit of a shaky camera there, banged it with my head. I'm just going to use a really thin brush to just drag a little bit of white from by the nose towards the outside of the face. I find this to be the easiest way to do eyes, like so. And next we are going to use a tiny bit of black to put a little spot in the centre of the eyes there. Now if you do make a mess of doing the, the little spot in the eyes, you just use a little bit of white once again. Apply it the same way you did previously and then just redo that. Or if you can manage it, just touch up around where the kind of pupil is. And get that how you want it to look. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Iron Hand Steel. This just to reapply a bit of the silvery metallic to the sword, just so that you can leave the null oil in the recesses and get that looking a little bit shinier. So you may want to be working on areas that be catching the most light and those details down the bottom there so that you can see all of those standing out. And finally, we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome and a really thin brush. And all we're going to do is do some diagonal lines on the sword and where you've still got that shade on and the iron hand steel, the Model Air Chrome will show up really well against that so you can do some nice little sort of thin lines. Make it look as though the blade has caught another blade and left a bit of a scrape or a mark on that. And just do the edges and any ridges to make those stand out. And that is the finished Easterling. Really pleased with how it turned out. I love the gold and crimson together. It does make me want to get a small army of these. The varnish is a little bit shiny on the back there, but that should dull down over time. But really pleased with how the Easterling turned out. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also think about subscribing to our other social media, link below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel and you enjoy the content and you'd like to support me, my coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Thanks very much.